All right. Welcome back to day two. Day two is all about the lazy girl money mentality. So we're going to start off with a quick little quiz right now, and it's around your money boundaries. So you can go ahead, read the questions on the screen, but if you're listening to the podcast episode, let me read them for you. So what you're going to do is you're just going to answer yes or no to these questions that I'm asking. Do you pay your team before paying yourself? And what I mean by that is when you are looking to the bills that month, are you even on the payroll or do you only get the scraps that are left over after you pay your team? Do you pay yourself anything from your business? So do you actually even pay yourself a salary? Do you have a set amount that you pay yourself every single month? Do you pay yourself at all? Or is it just every single month you don't know how much money you're going to make from your business? Do you pay for other things in your business, but you don't have a financial safety net? Do you carry credit card debt in your personal life, but not your business? Will you loan money to others or accrue credit card debt for others while you still carry credit card debt or you don't feel financial stability or security right now? So you will give money to other people, even though you have credit card debt and maybe no savings. Um, maybe you will take on credit card debt for other people, but you yourself still feel like you're kind of in a financially insecure place. All right. So if you have answered yes to those questions, we're going to look at what it looks like for you to not have money boundaries. And so if you answered yes, what I'm going to be saying is you don't have money boundaries right now. <laughs> And so what this can also look like, besides those things that we just said yes to, are other things like, again, taking on debt for others, giving your money away to people. Uh, it can also look like over-delivering and not getting paid appropriately for your services, so undercharging. It can also look like you maybe right now outsource money decisions to other people, whether it's a bookkeeper or an accountant, maybe you have a spouse, maybe you've even tried to hire someone to make all of the financial decisions for you. So sometimes what that looks like is like asking your accountant if you can afford to do something, but you yourself don't really know the answer to that question. Um, it can also look like you may feel overwhelmed by these financial details and decisions, and that's why you're outsourcing it at the time. So this is a common thread that I see with a lot of my clients is this thing called money boundaries. And what it looks like when we actually have healthy money boundaries, how our financial future and decisions change is when it's up happening as we actually charge appropriately for our services. You start taking care of yourself financially. So you have a savings account and you're also debt free. You communicate, big one, you communicate your needs and emotions clearly with others regarding money, even family, even friends, even spouses, even clients. You also budget your money weekly and you start to make empowered decisions around money. That's what it looks like when we actually do have money boundaries in place. And that's a part of the lazy girl money mentality is creating these boundaries so that you yourself can take care of yourself first. I see this time and time again with my clients who are six-figure people. I see the team gets paid, the Facebook ads get paid, all the tech subscriptions get paid, the coach gets paid, but I see the client not taking care of themselves. I've seen clients not even have themselves on payroll. I've seen clients who haven't paid themselves anything. I've seen clients who make well over six figures still be negative when it came to their personal checking account, but the business was always healthy financially and their personal life was not taken care of. I've taken clients who never paid themselves anything in their business, paid their team, paid everybody else before themselves, to then actually taking empowered decisions and giving themselves an $85,000 salary that they get paid every single month right on time. They are on an automatic payroll just like everybody else without having to make more money. And I've done that with my clients with the Lazy Girl Money Method. So as you're thinking about this today, as you're thinking about what are my money boundaries, do I have any in place and do I need to take steps to put them into place? I'm going to give you three quick things you can do today to start putting money boundaries into place if this is what you need. And I think every successful 
entrepreneur CEO needs money boundaries because what can end up happening is you get yourself into tricky financial situations. You can even get yourself on the brink of bankruptcy. You can get yourself to a place of never being able to take care of yourself financially because you're putting everybody else's needs before yours. So here are the three quick steps you can take today. Step number one, I want you to today to set deadlines for people that owe you money, whether it's a client, a cousin, uh, a mom, a dad, <laughs> your mom, your dad, right? Um, anybody in your life right now who owes you money, I want you to set a deadline for when those people owe you money, okay? And I'm talking about everyone, everyone. So just let them know. Here's a quick little script you can use, right? So I want you to think about, sit down, take out a piece of paper. Who are the people that all owe you money right now? Write their names down, write exactly how much you owe them, then send them a text message, a DM, anything like that, just saying, hey, so I know you owe me around $450. I'm going to need that money back by October 31st. Does that work for you? Simple way you can get your money back and you can start setting some money boundaries. Step number two, I know it's probably really scary also, by the way, I understand that's probably bringing up a lot of fear, but listen, this is how we start changing our financial future, okay? Step two, what if you didn't overgive? I just want you to think about this question. If you didn't overextend, I think even the word here right now isn't overgive because sometimes overgive can be a beautiful thing. I think really it's overextend. What if you didn't overextend? So you didn't put yourself into such a tricky financial place that you were able to take care of yourself. And if you wanted to give to other people, you could. Okay. So if you didn't overextend yourself financially right now, think about this question with all of the past financial decisions you have made. Would you have more money in your bank account right now? Would you be able to afford that new car, that new home, that new thing that you've been looking at? Would you have more money in your savings account right now? Would you have credit card debt right now? How much less credit card debt would you have right now if you weren't overextending yourself? How much more money would you have in your savings account if you weren't overextending yourself? I want you to just sit and just think about that question. Step number three, this is going to be a really fun one. It might be challenging for you, but it's fun. Step number three, create a day off date right now. I want you to pick one day in your calendar right now and block it off. The only thing you need to do that day is for you. Cancel all the client calls, cancel any of the business strategy sessions, cancel any of the mastermind calls, cancel anything else that somebody else needs from you, that the school needs this, that this person needs this, and then my kid needs this, right? Cancel all those calls or dates anything you have going on that's supposed to be going on that day or just block it off completely. Say no to anything that tries to fit in there. Say no to yourself trying to fit anything or there and choose this time just for you. So you can pick a time, you know, when you can have a babysitter for the kids. You can pick a time, you know, when your kids are going to be at school. Maybe it's even a work day and you usually fill it up with work. Block it all off. Create a day off date right now. Because what I know about women who don't have really strong money boundaries is I know that they are the biggest givers on the planet. They will give, 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 give. <laughs> they will give their time. They will give their money. They will give their love. They will give their energy. They will give their, their days. They will give all of it to other people. And what's really important right here is practicing boundaries, you know, with yourself and with other people. And it starts right now by taking that time just for you. So create your day off date right now. So those were the three quick steps you can take today in order to start stepping into that lazy girl money mentality. But the most important thing here that we walk away knowing is that it is important for you to pay yourself. It is important for you to take some time for yourself. It is important for you to start setting those deadlines of people owing you money. It's important for you to start taking that financial empowerment move to say, this is my money. This is myself. This is my future. I need to take care of it today. All right. I hope you enjoyed day two of the lazy girl money challenge. This was all about the lazy girl money mentality. Day three 
is when things start to really shift. Day three is when we actually start talking about those things that make the big shift mentally before you actually start creating the zero sum budget, before you start actually doing, you know, putting the action steps and strategy into place. Day three is where the shift happens mindset wise, and then you're able to take the action that you need. All right. I will see you on day three. Thank you so much for coming back. I'll see you tomorrow.